Mary. Hello. I am so excited about doing this tour. I feel like I am in an antique store. All of these beautiful antiques. How on earth did you come upon all of these antiques? Well, I used to run an antique store, so some of the stuff came from there. Um, some pieces are not antique. They're actually built for the bus, but I've added elements to them to make them feel antique. Okay. So tell me what kind of bus, you say bus, so what kind of bus are we in? This is a little 20-foot-long um, uh, four-window school bus with a... Um, with a van front. It's a Ford E350. Okay, well those things go forever and ever. Mary, this is such an interesting build, but you do have one story that I want you to touch on. You had an incident that happened in this bus that had to, that resulted rather in it being rebuilt. Can you tell yes. my viewers about that? Well, um, I built it the first time all by myself and I, you know, I started out, I didn't even know what a saw was and I was really proud of my build. And then on a rainy Texas highway, I flipped the bus. Wow. swerved and fell over onto the driver's side and the the bus was fine mechanically but the entire interior was wrecked okay. and um i was very fortunate that bob wells put out a plea for people to come and meet me in Ehrenberg and help me rebuild it and we had a 12 to 15 people who came and put their skill into it and now I feel like rolling the bus over is the best thing that ever happened to me because <laughs> this build is so much better than the build I did myself and it you still were... incorporates this a lot of the same stuff but right. it's a different build so that's an example of what was a calamity on face value turning into a blessing Absolutely. in disguise yep. well, Mary why don't we go on and take a tour of your delightful bus and show my viewers what it's like to live in an antique store on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is the cockpit. It's pretty much standard for E350 van. I haven't changed anything down here. Okay. The first thing I did when I got it though was hang up all this art. I'm seeing this. And this this is... is a collage of my mom. Oh, that's your mom. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? So you take her with you everywhere. Absolutely. And then you've got all of your, oh my goodness, look at all these. Yep, you can tell you owned an antique store for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and even over here. Now, what are these? They're antique fruit, cake, fruit crates from the 1930s, 20s and 30s. Wow. And that these are, we just made my old cabinets, which were the whole crate, broke in the rollover. But we took the ends off to make the doors. Okay, so you were able to salvage some of it. Yes, and then these are were new ones that had never been used. They're old. They're not new. They're old, but they've never been used. Okay. So I just put them on these boxes to make it all match. I see this back. Is that a fabric or? Yeah, the, those are my curtains. They just they roll down, and then when I want to use them, they just roll up, and they have magnets on the back of the yardstick that sticks them up. Okay, and then here's your dresser. Here it looks yep. like for your supplies. Do you have? Food my, and clothes in there? My cooking stuff is in here, pots and dishes and stuff. My clothes are in here, and down here are things that I sell at flea markets because that's another thing that I do as a little side gig. Okay, now that looks like it's solid wood. So is. is that pretty heavy? Are you concerned about the weight on that? Um, well, I've weighed the bus. I weighed it empty, and I weighed it full, and I'm not over the, the, the GVWR, so I'm fine with it. Okay. Now over here, I'm looking at your refrigerator. Mm -hmm. That now that is that an antique too? That is not an antique. That came from Amazon, but it's oh made goodness. to look vintage. And um, I wanted a regular fridge. I don't like chest fridges. I feel like I don't either. It's all wet in there. Yeah, I don't so, like digging in. Yeah. I'm looking at this other storage, and this looks like some kind of antique. Also, is it? Yeah, this is a thirty-five dollar wardrobe that I bought, um, and it holds has all my clothes in it. Oh, and then wow. I've got shelves in the side. So this really holds a lot of stuff. And I took out the bottom drawer so I could put my solar in there. And I, it's on a pull-out drawer now, pull, like a pull-out rack. Okay. Well, let's look over here because I really want to talk briefly about your solar. I have never heard of the unit that you have, but it's how many watts? Well, the, um, each of these units is, these are, this is the Montec X2000. And each of these is just over 2,000 watt hours so this is this is a total of about 4800 watt hours over here wow and um this is the main unit and this is an add-on battery and it's a great system that is currently on indiegogo for a really reasonable price and i highly recommend it i i my my other solar is all i am all montec the whole bus now you were telling me the add-on unit can be used alone for 
um, DC power. Yep, this unit is it it t can take in solar on its own. It can uh, it has it's set up for DC. It doesn't have an inverter, so you can't run 110 off of it. But if you had a 12 volt fridge and um, USB devices, you could operate with just that top unit if you want. But then it also when you plug it in to the bottom unit, it it it, it boosts the, the power. The power is pooled right. and it becomes an add-on battery to that unit. Now you have it connected to a solar or to solar on your roof. Yes. But you could connect it to panels. Yeah, you can connect portable panels. You can use it. It comes with this adapter that makes it work on this, so you can use that with any kind of solar panels you okay. want. Okay. And now, how many watts of solar do you have on your roof? I have twelve hundred watts. Wow. That is amazing. So you can go, once you get this fully charged, how long can you last before it would say drain down? Um, I could go about four days with no sun at all. Okay. And then you also still have your older unit over yep. here mm -hmm. and that's two 1,000 exactly. units Yes, so that's 2,000 power? watts over there. Okay. Yep. And that was in the bus when you rolled over? Yep. And, and it all works per no damage whatsoever it works perfectly now your bus it seems like it's almost indestructible because yeah. it rolled over and you it got righted and then you just drove on off well the cops wouldn't let me drive it because they thought that it had a fuel leak but it didn't as soon as they were gone i got in it and drove it away <laughs> okay so one of the things you hear about buses is the mechanical problems but you're saying other than the transmission which wasn't properly diagnosed you've really not had a lot of problems because of the E350, you said? Yeah, it's a really good engine. I mean, I've had, you know, I've had to replace the alternator. It's a 30-year-old bus. Right. Parts are right. going to break. I was just stunned when you told me how it rolled over and you were able to, once it was right, just yeah. drive off. Yeah. Buses are, buses are the safest thing on the road, I think. Okay. Well, let's look at your bed. Looking at your bed here, and this is beautiful headboard. Now, what what is this vintage from that's a 1930s um, bed frame that i started out with okay and a and then what kind of mattress do you have here um this is a custom made um foam mattress i like a firm mattress and i don't need a thick one so it's just two inch deep oh and that's sufficient for you yeah that's enough for me okay. i like i would sleep on the floor if i could <laughs> i mean <laughs> i like to be up a little but i like a hard surface okay to sleep on. now i see the hinges there and you were telling me basically that this um, folds in and it can become a kind of a sofa. Yeah, it becomes a little a little sofa. Okay. Like a little sitting area. Um, most of the time, if I don't have guests, and I do, I know I have a guest, but normally I leave the bed out, and so I figured I'd let you see how I really live. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I I found that even though my back of my van can turn into two benches with a table, I really take it out of the bed mode. Yeah. You know. So now let's look at your sink, and that is so cool yeah now is that a porcelain bowl that or? Is a por that's a yeah that's a talavera ceramic uh sink from mexico and then you have just i had this in my store and then you have a usb there yep this is usb water how much water and where do you carry your water i carry uh 12 gallons total a three and a five gallon under here and then another five gallons up front okay and then how big is your gray water and where is it the one gallon Poland spring bottle, that's my gray water. So okay. I just dump it more frequently. So do you find that having just the one gallon of gray water works for you? Or yeah. do you, does it? I don't use um, a lot of water, even though I have the sink. Mostly I clean my dishes and stuff with this mix of um, alcohol and uh, some other cleaners. Okay. So I don't run a lot of water because I just don't like to waste it. Well, water is a valuable commodity when you live yeah. on the road. Well, if I don't ask you about this, everyone is going to be saying, well, what does she do for the bathroom? What does she do? So what do you do for the bathroom? I have this uh, Stansport camping toilet and I use um, okay. pine pellets in it to absorb the waste that goes in there. And then I just toss the waste in the trash. So you have, you use basically a bag system. Yeah. Okay. And how about keeping clean in here? Well, I have these giant wet wipes over here and that's I I use those every morning. Do you find that these are effective these giant ones you I see they come from CVS? Yeah they're pretty effective and they're much bigger than the standard so you can get a little more out of them. Okay. Um, and then I have a lot of products that you would use for someone who is homebound or in a in a nursing home. 
um, that I have as backup. Like I can do, wash my hair with something that doesn't need to be rinsed out, stuff okay. like that. But mostly I go, you know, I go play, take a shower wherever I can find a nice cheap shower. Right, too. right. And there's a place here that's, I think, $6 or $5. something. $5. Yeah. We go, we just went yesterday to the $5 at shower. The, yeah, at the, at the beauty, beauty salon. salon. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Well, Mary, thank you for this tour of your beautifully crafted bus. Is there anything I've missed? Anything you think that you'd like to share with my viewers about your experience as a senior on the road, a senior female on the road? Um, anything that you want to talk about your bus? Well, the main thing I would say is I, I, I mean, I can't even imagine any other life. I have really blossomed in this life okay. and plan to continue it until, you know, forever as, as far as I'm concerned. It's a great way to live. Well, you know, there's one thing I can think of. You have a YouTube channel. Oh, I do. Yes. What is the name of your YouTube My channel? My YouTube channel is called Maximalist Minibus because as you can see, I live in a maximalist minibus. <laughs> yes. It's not a minimalist by any no, means. No, I am not a minimalist. I'm, I'm, I'm a staunch maximalist and you can do that in a bus. It's, you need to get your needs down smaller, but they can be colorful. They can be interesting. You don't have to have plastic tubs, you know, under a plywood slab you can do it and you can make it look like you you don't have to have a, a regular run-of-the-mill van is what you're saying right and but for me the bus was the way to go because i could make it a reflection of myself um you know i have in my cabinets up here i have a lot of craft supplies i still do all the things that i would do if i were stationary i just get to do them in more interesting places true well go over and check out maximalist maximalist minibus maximus maximalist minibus and in that Mary was a TV writer, she can tell a great story. So we will see you down the road. And thank you for visiting. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.